The footage from this video is entirely from the first half of Somerville, barring a couple of examples of bugs that won't show any big moments. Those examples will show a change that happens about halfway through the game, but if you've seen the initial trailers, you already knew this was going to happen eventually, and I will warn you before I talk about it. Other than that, there are no spoilers in this video. From the opening shot, Somerville has a presence and power that's conveyed through the intense visuals and rich sound design, and throughout its roughly 5 hour runtime, it continues to deliver on an artistic front. Experiencing the world, solving clever puzzles, analyzing the details, and surviving the alien forces you encounter is a lot of fun, as is expected from a studio led by one of the original co-founders of Playdead, known for Limbo and Inside. But while the artistic elements of Somerville fire on all cylinders, it's the technical side that lets it down. That's something that you wouldn't really expect to matter all that much for a cinematic platformer. I mean, it's not like you're out there traveling 100 miles an hour or cranking 90s, but in action, these issues make the game a little less tense, a little more goofy, and potentially a lot more frustrating. Somerville is about a guy, his wife, his dog, and his baby who's got the freaking sauce. Look at little homie's waddle. Why is this dude so swagged out? Sheesh, hit it, baby. After a big sci-fi attack that cripples their home, the dad reaches out to somebody who fell through the building and gets KO'd. He wakes up sometime later and his whole family's just straight up left him there. And the remainder of the game is spent trekking through this now dilapidated world that's become partially encased by alien metal and goo, endlessly trudging forward no matter what you encounter. Exploring this world is great, and what I think Somerville really nails is a sense of scope. You spend most of your time either outdoors or in very deep areas in terms of the Z dimension. You'll meander through a massive field, see packed highways with cars backed up for miles, and drift past full areas that you never set foot in, altogether showcasing the full state of the world instead of limiting your understanding of the destruction to the small linear stretch you directly experience. The basic art style of this game is also fantastic with the angular models and incredible lighting and colors, but it's a joy to look at even in low light situations with a muted color palette like this cave. It's got the right amount of empty space to make it feel lonely, but enough little details and markings to not make it feel flat. Believe me when I say though, the things you're seeing in this video are nowhere near the most beautiful that this game gets. I kept a lot of the best looking areas and moments out of this video for the sake of surprise. The art direction in this game is award worthy. It's a shame that it came out after the game of the year nominee cutoff because it might have won best art direction this year but it'll likely be forgotten by the next cycle. Also, a lot like Trek to Yomi from earlier this year, it plays with camera angles and perspectives quite a bit. There are cuts and tracking shots that are used sometimes to shake up the presentation, but more importantly, to give you better angles of your sweet caboose when climbing up ladders. I mean, damn, my man's got hit for days. What's in the milk this family's drinking? Unfortunately though, it's with the camera and character control where we get into the first of the technical issues. The cuts from one angle to another are sometimes pretty jarring, which isn't helped by the hitches and jumps that happen during transitions, and when the camera's focused on the player, it can jerk around or work against you as a result of wonky physics. There are a couple of weirdly placed invisible walls, for example, and the game struggles with reacting to slight changes in elevation. Climbing any set of stairs looks unnatural and always spikes the camera in a weird way. Sometimes I'd crouch and my character would stand up randomly for a second and then crouch back down. Objects would react when I wasn't really close to them. The character model itself would look a bit silly trying to navigate around all of this, and it undercuts some of the beauty when you're constantly seeing the game struggle with some basic movements. You'll be looking at a gorgeous vista and then see your character glitch out for a second or not be able to interact with an object that you're right in front of, but then you go to a weird faraway point and the game slides you over to the right place, or the wrong place sometimes. It just kind of takes you out of things. The short chase sequences that appear on occasion also sometimes suffer from this because veering a little bit too far to the side slows you down like you're running through mud, even though you could probably make it out of the situation with this path you're taking if it let you go at normal speed. I also found that weird range of interactables thing I mentioned pretty frustrating in later chase sequences that I don't want to show for spoiler reasons, but these both led to some undeserved deaths that soiled the moment a bit. The chases themselves when they work are great, they imbue a more frantic energy into the game, and I still manage to enjoy most individual sections of it. But when you mix in the problems that I mentioned, as well as the frame rate problems that existed even in my very capable setup, sometimes with frames dropping into the teens for a second or two or coming to a complete stop entirely for an instant, it just doesn't all come together as seamlessly as you might hope. I know some of this stuff might come off as nitpicky, but when presentation is the cornerstone of this kind of experience, those smaller issues have more of an impact. I was getting distracted by some of the rough edges more than I would in a more open or gameplay centric title. Not to the point that it ruined it, but to the point where it's noticeable. In terms of the actual gameplay of Somerville, I really liked it. All of the puzzles revolve around the same theme of light and energy, specifically you using the powers of liquefying and hardening this alien material which can only be used in the presence of light or energy. The effects of your powers on the material
material never get old. It melts into goo or hardens into stone in such a satisfying way, in no small part because of its sound design. There's often no music playing in the background. You only get to hear parts of this fantastical yet serene score in brief moments of discovery or peace. And in its absence, individual sounds are able to stick out a lot more. The constant soft ambiance lets sound effects really cut through. The buzz of your liquefier, the dissipating of metal, the dry stiffening of the hardened ability, which until this point was just what we called getting to the free throw line 20 times a night. Hey yo! The chittering of these orb creatures, the rush of water, the soft whirring of dead machines, and the powerful warbling lights that scream danger with their sound alone. All of this stuff was amazing and strengthened the atmosphere of this game tenfold. It was so good that I started talking like the world's most pretentious knobhead for the last minute or so there. You must excuse me. I've grown quite wary. The puzzles themselves are also really well done in my opinion. They require some critical thinking, but nothing that'll break your brain or require a guide. I actually think at first I was thrown off by how simple some of them were. You'd have a lot of screen real estate and a lot of assets strewn around, but you only had to worry about a small focused area. I was definitely overcomplicating it for myself. According to the devs, there are secrets that are going to take the community a long time to find, so I'm assuming that I didn't come close to discovering every inch of this game. But the puzzles that were there for progression purposes usually built off previous ideas really nicely. A lot of the time you're just forging a path forward or performing simple tasks, but sometimes you gotta use your noggin just a little bit, and the props the game gives you get more creative as you continue. I'm trying to keep it all vague and not show you everything on purpose because that would just kind of be letting you know how to get through major sections of the game, but trust me, it's balanced pretty well. It actually becomes more streamlined in the second half as the game funnels you through its narrative instead of having you solve multi-step puzzles, which is really nice. I hate it when you're barreling towards the ending and the puzzles bloat the last stretch because they want to be the hardest in the game. Like, I get it on one level, but also it ruins the pace so good on this game for avoiding that. There was only one point where I got stuck because of my own inability to solve a puzzle, and it was actually unbelievably simple, I'm just dumb. But in my defense, this was on the heels of a major bug that stopped me from progressing for a few days, so I kinda just thought the game was breaking again, and I guess it's time I talk about that now. Like I said at the beginning, some of the bugs require me to tell you about a change that happens mid-game that you should definitely know about if you've seen anything about Somerville, like if you've seen the trailers, you're safe here. But just in case you haven't, feel free to go to this timestamp to skip this stuff, all you need to know is that I couldn't continue the game at two different parts because of two different bugs, and they randomly fixed themselves eventually after multiple resets. Okay, I'm assuming that anybody who wanted to leave is gone now. Uh, about halfway through, you reunite with your wife and child, who's apparently gained the ability to transport to the Shadow Realm every time he's picked up. I'ma be honest, I think he should have been the main character. This baby is an enigma, I wanna know what's going on with him. Anyways, once this happened, the whole game started revolting against me. I think it sensed the fact that the love of a woman was too ridiculous of a concept for me to wrap my head around, so it tried its damnedest to make sure that I didn't. The wife's AI is all over the place. There's a point where the kid picks up a fox that has a light on it, so you need to go hold your wife's hand to activate your powers, but again, in what seems to be a personal attack against me, she refuses to hold your Cheeto-crusted gamer hand sometimes. And to get her to grab it again, you gotta shake and shimmy around, leave her area and come back to it, just do a bunch of random voodoo, and sometimes she'd enter a possessed state and you need to restart the whole checkpoint. I also needed to restart at one point because I thought you could explore this crevice here, but I just got stuck and couldn't leave, which also led to this weird audio glitch. Those weren't even my biggest issues, as annoying as they were. Once the little guy grabbed the fox, I held my wife's hand and my arm glowed blue, so I was like, okay, I can liquefy this metal with this light like I've been doing this entire time, but when I pressed the button to do so, nothing happened. This sent me on a 30 minute descent into madness, as I tried every which way to solve this puzzle. I couldn't believe that I had no idea how to progress. The whole time I'm sat there thinking, my name is Barry Allen, and I am the dumbest man alive. And then finally, I realized after going through chapter select that the button to activate my power Powers wasn't working anymore, at all, at any point. I reset the game, reset my computer, switched controllers, started an earlier chapter, everything short of a full save reset, and nothing. I came back to the game the next day after an update, still nothing. I came back later that day, and it was fixed, I have no idea how. After I finally got past my own personal Everest, which was this door, I quit out because it was the dead of night, and when I came back the next day, I couldn't use the buttons again, and I had to pull some random malarkey to get it back. I still don't know what fixes it. The good thing is that you only need to deal with the mechanics that gave me most of these issues for a short spell, but the bad thing is, them being so bunched up really took the wind out of my sails when I was playing. This also isn't the only part of the game that has major bugs. Another one was near the end of the game as a level didn't load in properly and I was just left with this.
Nice feat, homie. But this one also wasn't fixed by reloading a checkpoint or even restarting the game to my surprise. I had to restart my whole computer to fix it. Behind the technical issues, not just the major bugs, but also the smaller hitches that work against the atmosphere, I think this game is incredible. It is a wonder to behold at times, especially in later sections that I don't want to show here, and it lays out quite a world for you to explore and fun mechanics to play with, although I never felt particularly moved in the way that it likely intended. There's a weight and emotionality that's missing compared to other cinematic platformers, likely as a result of its higher concept in the same short package. Its push to feel bigger in characters, presentation, and world is admirable, and somewhat refreshing in a genre that sometimes feels very tight and contained, but the focus that lets these type of games hit home is sacrificed in that pursuit. Not that it doesn't go for sad or thought-provoking moments, I just found that they didn't hit home as much as they should have. But its closing hour is still a visual feast that, again, without spoiling anything, powerfully concludes the game's themes of isolation. Somerville is a good game. In fact, it's a great game, one of the best of the year in my opinion, but it's not as good as it could have been. The technical letdowns, including ones that aren't really fixable and are just how the game works, don't do justice to the art this game puts out, and I can only hope it gets cleaned up in the near future because it deserves to be experienced as the game it can be. Somerville is brilliant, but it's also a bit broken. If you're new here, subscribe, uh, join the Discord in the description, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.